soul ties. I told you, I said, when we move to another venue is when I will now be able to do deliverance, cast out demons. Many of you, when I minister to many of you, the spirits that are playing with your soul, we talk. No, we'll do that here. You are not possessed, but your soul has a tie to different generations, and it has stopped your life. When I taught you, that spirit will summon it, it will talk, and will cast it out. It is not in your spirit. It has access through your soul. So let me pause before I go to the next one. What are the gateways of the soul? Eyes. Everybody say eyes. Yes. Everybody say yes. Perception. Everybody say perception. Yes. Do you know there are fragrances that can make you horny? There are fragrances that you can inhale. And a spirit will start troubling you from that day. This is why you should strive to have your own car, at least for once. Because you enter bus with different fragrances. All these gateways, including sensory perception, they are gateways to the soul. Let me explain. I will go deeper. So you're about to enter a bus. Your hand mistakenly brushes past the breast of a lady. And she's attractive. As a guy that is not a firewood, something will wake up inside you. Right? Yeah, they don't want to talk. They say, "Mm." (laughs) hmm. I caught you. They don't want to talk. "Mm." (laughs) Hmm. Let me tell you, it's only God that is perfect, okay? So if I'm telling you these things, I'm telling you as real as it is to me also. So you will feel it. Yes, you will feel it. Why? Your hand touched something and it sent a message to where? To your spirit, not to your soul. There are some of you right now, because of, before you got born again, you, you know, you are Zazu, you know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, your pastor was Archbishop Naramali. <laughs> so, when you are inside the bus, coming from church, and they are playing that song, your legs just start moving. Mm-hmm. Say, Jesus, forgive me. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's okay. God understands. It's, it's okay. It's with time that will change. Why? It's in your soul. Does that mean you are not born again? No, you are born again. It's your spirit. That was born anew, right? Your soul still needs to be changed. So somebody can and you go to church, you are born again. See how rude you are. See how you are misbehaving. Bros, that person is changing. Give the person time. Be praying for the person. Don't be pointing finger because you have your own too. Be praying for the person and say, ah, I pray that what your pastor is teaching will enter into you. But I pray for you that you will change. Because... Hmm. Let me tell you on that secret. There are many secrets. Remember, in the year of light, so there are many secrets. Fasting and prayer doesn't um, affect the devil. Wait. Number one, none of us is at the level of Jesus when Jesus did not have power. So Jesus comes, 30 years old guy, like we are, and he then comes to fast for 40 days. After 40 days, guess who comes strolling? The devil. The devil didn't shake. Ooh. Jesus. No. That's Agbarala, Mount Zion. That's Agbarala. Don't be deceived. The word of God. The word, none of us is the word of God. No matter how fine I can preach, I'm, I don't know everything. He fasted for 40 days. We, if we fast, we take some water. You know, we call it wisdom. So we don't pass on to glory before. <laughs> Hold on. Now stop laughing. <laughs> So he fasted. Jesus was fasting, finished fasting 40 days. The devil came. The Bible says, your Bible says, the devil took him on a journey. A pastor once met me, so I fasted for 40 days, and after the 40th day, I started feeling lost towards a lady. I said, yes, the devil just came. Because he thought, once he fasts for 40 days, he's stepping on clouds of glory. He's so holy. No. The word of God fasted and the devil came after his fasting. Fasting attracted the devil. 
Okay, that one does not surprise you. Job. The sons of God were in heaven having conference with God. The devil walks into the conference. It's not angels of God alone, sons of God. The devil walks into the conference and he comes to see God. He didn't shake. Ooh, glory, glory, glory. He has left heaven. He did not fall. He didn't shake. He came to see God and they discussed. He didn't say, Lord, your glory is too much. He looked at God and they were discussing. What do you think the devil respects? He doesn't respect the fact that Jesus Christ fasted. So your own fasting will not make him respect you. Yes. Let me just give you a news flash now. Your fasting and prayer, uluwao, uluwao, and you pray and you shake everything. The devil will be looking at you like this. Finish, I will still make you angry. Finish, you will still sleep with somebody. Calm down. What the devil respects most is the man in the presence, not the presence. Yep. Because the man in the presence of God eh, reminds him of Jesus. Remember that temptation, Jesus Christ was not defeated him. It was not just the fasting. The fasting enabled Jesus to stand, right? But you have to still go through that test. It is you, your choices, your choices after you have spent time praying and everything. Your choices is what the devil will respect and, and leave you alone. Yes. So that's why I'm teaching this now. So many of you will start disconnecting from your parents. From on, I mean, I mean your parents. I mean controlling parents. Yes, controlling. If my parents were controlling, I won't be doing this now. My father told me, you are the best in computer things and all that. You mean this is what you want to do with your life? I said, this is what God has called me to do. He said, okay, we'll be praying for you. We've always known that God will call you, so we'll be praying for you. That's because my parents knew. They've been praying. God had told them that sometime in this guy's life, he will preach the gospel. So they knew. What about parents that don't know? They don't hear God. They don't know God. They don't work with a prophet of God. They don't know anything. They will fight you definitely now. They will fight you. I heard a testimony of a sister this morning. There was a plane crash in one country. She rushed late. She was rushing. She was late for a flight. She was going somewhere for business. She put her luggage and everything. They said the plane is already... They closed the door already. They're about, the plane's about to move. I've been in that situation. So she begged. She called. She bribed whoever she can bribe. And then, hold on. Somebody is coming. Person came late. Passenger, something, something, something. is coming to the, to the plane. So they took her luggages. As they took the luggages and she was walking to where they would search her, she lost her peace. And this woman walks with God. She's not a prophetess or anything. She walks with God. When she lost her peace, ah, she knew it is a sign. She said, please, my luggage is back. They said, look at it on the tarmac. They have already taken to the plane. Woman, what's wrong with you? She said, please, can I get my luggage back? Please, I beg. I'm not going again. She said, no, madam. Your luggage will go ahead of you. You can't come and waste our time. So she apologized to them, and she left the airport. The plane went in the air. As it went into the air, it turned upside down, and everybody died. And so she drove back. They drove to the scene. Hey, she picked her luggage, and she went home. She's not a pastor. She's not a prophetess. She's not anything. She walks with God. Now, if you don't have a parent that walks with God, that hears God's voice, you are disadvantaged already. <clears throat> I can tell you many encounters. I'm doing business importation business back then in Benin, my father, we call and say, son, I am seeing something happening in the country right now. And I'm seeing that those of you doing importation will be affected. I'm just expecting a product right now. He says, after that one, stop. And I stop. And every other person, even in Kami, that imported after me, they have problems. Oh, okay. Okay. Then one time, a demon, not a demon, like, an, like a strong man, yes, came to my house. In this encounter, and I forced the demon out. Now I was in Benin, and I shut the door, and I woke up. My father calls me, 
I said, I am seeing this spirit trying to enter into the compound where you are. I said, yes, 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 yes. I dealt with it. Are you seeing that level of... How many of you have that with your parents, if your parents are even Christians? So I dealt with it. I just woke up when you called me now. I saw it come to the door. I pushed it out. It can't enter. I said, good. Be prayerful. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Now, if you don't desire that with your own children, please leave the ministry because it's like you're wasting your own time and I will watch you. I won't tell you. I will watch you that this one is just wasting our time. Yeah, okay. Because I know all of you. I know, that's why I was telling I know all of you, but I don't talk. I wish Pastor Efrain was there. There was a time he came to see me. Sir, I just want to see you. I said, God told me a lot of things about you. He said, okay. I mentioned everything. I was right. But you'll be playing keyboard there. I won't say anything. I'll just because <laughs> oh, no, okay, okay, okay. Yes. I've learned the way of wisdom. So this thing I'm teaching you is a major thing. Who are you connected to that you're not supposed to be connected to? Begin to find out. If your parents are not that spiritual, you start working on yourself. Else you repeat your parents' life. I don't care if your parents uh, were poor. You will be poor too. I don't care all the business we will teach in church. Because the role of parents is to pray for you. Your parents are your first priests, are your first prophets, are your first pastors. If you have missed that, don't worry. Align yourself to God and spiritual fatherhood. Last week was Father's Day, right? Oh, I wish I was around. There are three types of fathers. Let me, let me leave that. When God sees your parents fail, he provides a spiritual father. But because most of you parents may have failed, you don't know how to relate with a father biologically. So how will you know how to relate to the father spiritually? There's God the father, there's a spiritual father, and there's biological father. I did not say there's a biological father and a spiritual father. There's God the father as a father. There's the spiritual father, your head, and there's the biological father. These two are to align you to God. Where one has failed, more responsibility is upon this one. So if you ask me in the role of Kami, I don't have more than 10 that are sons, that are true sons. I don't have more than 10. In the spirit, angels show me your charts, even you. Your charts. Angels show me. So when I see things and I come to church and I smile, oh, I told you long ago, my smile is the greatest thing that can make you know that there's something I know that I don't have to say. So ties. I told somebody, I said, I want to help you. I want to help you in business. I, my heart, listen, spiritual fatherhood is not the same thing with mentorship. It's not the same thing with having a pastor. I, I will show you that in the Bible, where David was speaking to people and said, I pray that my heart be open to you. If my heart is not open to somebody, you can attend church many times. It is just what is in church you will get. But if my heart is open to you, I can connect with something that will make you big because I have access. Somebody was talking to me, one of our brothers here. I wish he was in church today. Talking to me yesterday. Sir, please help me. Help me. I want to leave my job. I want to go to another job. I said, go. I want to resign from my job. I said, resign. He says, sir, won't you help me? I said, do I look like a recruiter to you? I'm not a recruiter. And he says, sir, just help me, direct me to where I should go. I said, I can't do that. We don't have that level of relationship. I don't cast what belongs to children, to dogs. I'm sorry. I can't do that. He says, sir, please help me. I said, okay, hold on. There's a book called Purpose Driven Life. Have you read to understand your purpose in this life? You want to jump from a job paying you 100k to affiliate marketing because you, you read stories of 50 people that got 500k in two months. How is that wisdom? Okay, have you read the book? And so I read the book, but I didn't get anything out of it. I said, that's the exact reason why I can't help you. You don't know your purpose. So if I pour into you, I'll be pouring into a basket. You can't hold anything and I won't even know what to pour into you. I said, so you go to MFM camp, you go and pray. You go and find out what God created you for first. Then we can begin to direct you. 
I will be a prostitute. If everything God gives me, I give to people without protocols. I give to goats, to sheep, to dog, to pig. I give to people anyhow. God will stop giving because God doesn't waste. Who do you have so tied with? That's the person you are telling things to that you, should, you may not be supposed to tell anything to. Who do you have soul tie with? Has the soul tie benefited you or has it kept you on the same level? Some people, we try and separate them from this, their best friend. They are both in church because this best friend, this one is overshadowing this one. The few pastor is against two of us and we are two sisters. Uh, blood sisters. You know that Nollywood movie, Blood Sisters? That movie hmm, is the best example for toxic soul tie. But that's the best friend most of you are looking for. That you can kill somebody and the best friend will also kill with you. What well, you guys are looking for? May God help us in Jesus' name. One time in my journey with God, God told me something, showed me something that I will never forget. He said, all movies that you love to watch, and I love to watch action movies, do you know that they are, they are in rebellion to my will? <laughs> I argued. Though. I said, no, Lord, it's just entertainment. He said, no, it's not. Look at this movie you are watching. So I was watching a movie. The guy killed the daughter and shot the guy's leg. The guy fell, was taken for dead. Then a few months later, they fixed the leg. He begins to train, right? Right? Then I make that sound. He's training for what? Revenge. <laughs> and we believers are watching this. We're happy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and God said, in real life, is this my will? He said, Papa. <laughs> it's not. But, but, but that movie is helping us to believe in revenge. Right? Yeah. And we've watched it all our lives. There's no movie, if you ever watch a movie where they did something bad, bad, bad to a person, and the person kept leaving it for God, leaving it for God, till they died, you... <laughs> you will insult the movie, you will insult the producer. If you see that person on the street, you see what's wrong with you? <laughs> and that leads me to my next thing. So tied to things. Many of us, if your phone gets missing, your soul knows. Hmm. I've entered people. You will just feel. Have they ever stolen your phone from you? How many of you have misplaced your phone? You feel empty. Your, I'm not, I'm not saying your body. You will just feel cold breeze will blow on you. If you're a guy, peace will catch you. That hot piece, you will then begin to sink. What will I do with my life now? <laughs> Why? Your soul was connected to a gadget. This is the greatest addiction now, beyond masturbation and pornography. If you have not worked with God till God tells you, leave your phone for one week. Not for prayer, just leave it. God is trying to ensure you don't get addicted. Some of you, data does not stay with you. You are just scrolling, scrolling. You yawn, you are still scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. You are eating, you are still scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. This is the generation that consumes the highest level of knowledge compared to any generation that has lived on earth before. Because if you scroll one scroll, you will see Joshua Selman. If you scroll the next scroll, you will see five ways to dress well as a lady. Right? If you scroll on that scroll, you will see super story of a guy that killed the girlfriend. Abby, you are swallowing all those information inside. In the 1980s, just one story is enough for the week. One story. Eh? By the next three days, they are still discussing, so that guy killed the girl. Now, wow. This generation, 
we, we get everything in seconds. And that's why the greatest message people cannot teach right now is patience. Patience. I'm 28. When will I marry? I'm 32. When will... Patience. We celebrate movements, not progress. So he got a car. He got married. You are clapping. He's 29. The girl is 25. Ah, uh-huh. But before God, his real wife, his real wife is still in NYSC. She got delayed by family issues and she fought her way through in prayer. His real wife, but he needed to marry so that people can believe that he's making progress. And that's what we celebrate. And by 40, he's regretting marrying the lady. They have two children. He cannot remarry. He can't break up with her because she has not done anything really wrong. But the marriage is frustrating him. He's spending more than he should spend. And the other one has found somebody else at the right time and she has moved on. We celebrate what we think success is. Success doesn't have mates. Write it. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. The soul that sinneth Yes. Ah! You, 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 didn't, you didn't even think about it. The soul that sin it shall die. The intellect of that soul shall die. The emotions of that soul shall die. This is why we have women that can have sex without emotions. Some of you call them runs girls or prostitutes. Mm-hmm. They can have sex with five men during the week and without emotions. And their account is reading millions. Some even do it for free. I wonder why. But some, of, some even do it for free. And their emotions don't judge them. They will still come to church and say, Shaka Balabas. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And this is why, when we go into prison ministry, thank God for those of you that uh, uh, went to orphanage yesterday. I saw your God bless you. When we go into prison ministry, you will see people that they can kill. And there will be no remorse. They, they take it as normal. If you make me angry, I kill you. This is the problem of failed parenting. When parents fail and the home is divided, the child's emotions, the child's will, the child's intellect becomes scattered. You can't explain what is normal to that child anymore because the child was raised in an ecosystem that is not normal. Yes. It will take God to work on that child and pastors to labor over that child before that child can be normal and begin to work their way into normalness as the society demands. Some of us saw our moms cheat on our dad or our dads drink. I saw my mom beat my dad. So when I tell some of you that I'm not really, I don't really like ladies, this is where I'm talking from. But who will understand? Say, Pastor Phil, is ash. It's ash. He doesn't, no, no, this is where it is. I saw my mom and my dad did not raise a finger. And my dad actually could beat her, but he didn't raise a finger. What do you think it does to a child? The child's mind is scattered. He begins to look at females like a mini version of his mom and begins to develop hatred. But there is no counseling in Nigeria. I was talking to Pastor Ifan the other day. I said, there's no pastor that pastors pastors in Nigeria. Everybody comes and guides everybody for conference. Nobody sits down with the pastor and says, how are you? I know church work is not easy. Talk to me. Nobody comes to say, I heard that one member said you did this to her. Is it true? What really happened? Nobody does. Everybody celebrates the pastor that they don't know his secrets. They don't know anything bad about him. They are the ones that shine. But the ones that maybe fell, maybe did a mistake, the church, church crucifies him. We are hypocrites. So this is an issue. That all of us we are raised, if we check all of you's story now, including mine, you will see the default in parenting. What we are doing as a ministry is to correct that. Why? Because God is generational. If you are like this now and you don't change, this version of you will cause a problem in future called a child. That will grow up and misbehave. Is it me you will hurt by not reporting? You have children that don't report too, then you will see how it is. At that time... We've moved on yonder as God is helping us. So this is a problem. And that's why God said we must deal with this thing today, your soul. Say, God, help my soul. So 
if these are the gates of your soul, how do you guard your heart with all diligence? Close these gates. Now, I'm going to go to another scripture. Remember, the sons of a particular man in the Bible called Noah, he was naked, right? He was naked, right? What did they do? One saw the father's nakedness and started spreading the story. Right? Another one, the two others saw that that one has seen something and they chose not to see it. Right? And they took clothes and they backed up and covered the father. Right? Check their generation. That thing affected their generation. They were blessed. That other one that saw the father's nakedness and went to start spreading it. Enter the curse. Parents don't have to curse you. Listen, parents are not perfect. I told somebody, I said, many parents are just trying to figure out what to do. There is no school for parenting. There has never been in Nigeria. Well, it's okay, parenting one-on-one. How many of you are newly married? Newly married, you have a child already. Okay, parenting one-on-one. The first class is, in the first six months of the child, there's no class like that. Parents are just youths in older age trying to figure out how do we take care of this child? Hey, this child has a teaching problem. These school fees, how do I get? Yes. We blame them, but we are about to become them. You can never do better than what you blame. Don't write it. Oh. Don't write it. Learn it. If your parents didn't teach you, I'm teaching you now. Understand it that it was not easy for my mom. It was not easy for my dad. Understand it and begin to ask God, God, I want to be better. When you begin to do that, God takes that humility and begins to give you grace to see what your parents should have done. So you start doing it now. You start working on it now. Else, if you keep blaming, 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 you are drawing closer to them. You are getting closer. Till you become like them and a child is now blaming you, you now hate yourself. Understand it is not easy for them. But if you pray for them, if you honor them, God will make it easier and give you wisdom for you. There's no parents, not even the bad ones, that does, does not want their children to do better than them. Is that they don't know how. I've been in the same situation before. My elder was blaming my father. By now, all of us were supposed to be born abroad. Look at Philip, look at everybody. And my father will call me. I'm the last one. I will come to the meeting, greet everybody, and I will sit down. And I will say, can I say something? And when I begin to talk and enter everybody, everybody will be quiet. At the end of the day, we all kneel down. My father will pray for us. Yes. It's a function of two things. One, I have more money than most of them. Two, my money came because of honor. Traveling abroad, traveling abroad. How did I get there? I told you, I honored my father. Changed all his shoes to the most expensive shoes. And I said, Daddy, I want to go to the countries you've gone to. I want you to open... It's not just like that. You just say, I want to go abroad, just carry a passport. You can get there. They'll reject you. And my father prayed for me. And from that year, I started traveling almost every year. I started traveling abroad. Honor is the way. Oh. I did not say my father didn't have faults so, on my mother. In fact, my father had to remarry. I did not say that. I said, I honored. Close your eyes to some things. You won't repeat it. Some of you want to know things that are not your business. Close your eyes to some things and follow. And that's what I did. And that's what I'm still doing. I still called my father this week. He still prayed for me. To some of you, I know you are hurting. I know your soul has been bruised. Don't leave it like that. Attend to it. Talk to someone that understands. That's why we have leaders. Not, not leaders, please. That's why you have me here. I can't, even the leaders, they are not okay. That's why we have me here. That's why you have counselors out there. If you need to see a therapist, see a therapist. Because you are getting older in that character. You are getting older. And outside there, they won't tell you. They will just judge you. The way life is, is, is opposite to school. Life, in school, they teach you and give you tests. Life tests you before teaching you. So church, books, tapes, marriage conferences, um, spiritual conferences are the only system for you to learn ahead of time before you face tests in life. One of the Fulani guys jumped into my compound. I had options. I 
could shout at him. I could pick up a weapon and fight him. He was with his cutlass. And this year, I'm not talking something far. And what happened was the situation was handled with wisdom. Until today, I'm in peace. Another person did something very foolish in the area I live in. A woman, she's married, she has her children. They take Indian hem and all those things. And it cost me almost a million, all right? The options were there to meet the woman and said, Madam, look at this thing you did in your compound. Look at how you did this thing and how it affected my window. Are you that stupid? I didn't do it. I felt like doing it. I didn't do it. People had gathered. Noise was everywhere. I didn't do it. I bear the pain. I told myself, I will do this thing according to the wisdom of God. This is a test. I will pass it. I had options for quick fix. I didn't do that. I was waiting on the way of God. Listen, the way of God is foolish. Don't write it, though. I'm trying to show you. Because I've even had somebody call me foolish for not re reacting the way they thought I would react. The way of God is foolish. People came to me and said, Ah, is this the abundance? Ah, ah, you are too gentle. Mm. Go and give her a piece of your mind. Hmm. In the spirit, I had looked into the woman's life. Spiritually, she, she, she gets something from hand. I don't know if you understand my, my balance. This is how people enter issues. Maybe the man is on the road and your, your car splashed water on the person. Are you blind? Are you this? You now went to slap. That person may be an ancestor in darkness. You've entered an issue you don't even know how to pray for. That's how this woman was, in darkness. So when I designed that one, I said, okay, I can't, I can't if you go and react anyhow, let me tell you, with the Holy Ghost, angels will give space for the demon to deal with you. Why? You broke the edge, so the serpent must bite. So I calmed down, and I waited for the right way to do it. And guess what? Like the Bible said, I held my peace. Every of the major people in the community came and fought for me, defended me, dealt with the woman, made sure she paid, and they stayed till everything was fixed. That's wisdom. But my flesh felt like moving. The Bible says, Paul speaking, after preaching, I tame my flesh so that after preaching, me myself will not be cast away. It's a lifelong journey. You will tame yourself. Your mother in law will offend you. Your husband or your, or your wife will offend you. You will tame yourself not to cross between certain borders. The battle is in your soul. You have only read Battlefield of the Mind. What about the one in the soul? Where you are more intelligent than your wife. And so everything she's saying looks like badadash to you. Okay, what's this one I'm talking about? But you have to nurture her. You have to teach her. You have to be there for her. Be careful who you marry. Be careful who you have soul ties with. Let's go to the next scripture. Are you getting blessed at all? Yes, okay. Oh. <laughs> Let's go to the next scripture. Second Samuel. It's not your regular church. Oh. Uh -huh. Second Samuel. Hey, Jesu. Second Samuel. Twenty. <clears throat> Everybody read. Verse two. 2 Samuel 20, verse 2. You can see it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. 2 Samuel 20, verse 2. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm 
are you seeing loyalty? Are you seeing loyalty? And this is also a form of soul tie. That word is what I wanted you to see, clave. The Bible says, a man shall leave and what? Cleave. Clave is the past, I don't know how they call it, is it past tense, past party people or past participable? <laughs> I don't know. But it's the past of cleave. I guess what I'm saying now. Yes. They stayed with their king. Yes. So, healthy parental soul bond, soul connection is good, but when it becomes controlling, when you are mature enough to make your own choices, rather than negotiating, it becomes toxic. Best friend is good, but you don't put out your whole soul on somebody. And you have to be sure that both of you are chasing after God if you are going to marry. Same thing with leadership. Are you seeing it there? Same thing with leadership. Same thing with who is ahead of you. Your soul tie. Soul ties are formed. That's why I said your phone. You have a soul tie with your device. Why? Your device attends to your emotions. Attends to your will. Attends to your intellect. And does a lot of things for your mind. Anybody that has that access to your life, you have a soul tie with the person. Even if it is me. Even if it is someone that is not a Christian. You have a soul tie with the person. Psalm 23 verse 3. Open your Bibles. That's where the deliverance comes from. Psalm 23 verse 3. When you have had a wrong soul tie, then God now begins to make systems or call to restore your soul. He says what? He restored my soul. Your soul can be restored back to the default settings. And let me tell you why, how this works. If the person you have a soul tie with by sex, maybe toxic relationship gave you anything, maybe this thing. One of the ways to be free is to d- remove this thing from your life. Remove anything that will make you remember that person. That's one of the ways to be free. If possible, change location. Then your mind can now start changing. Yes. Everybody you meet has a soul. It's their soul that gets angry with you. Discernment is not even about spirits alone. It's about the soul. Many people are not possessed. They are just not good for you. Let me, let me give an example. Most people do not even know the things I've been through. But yeah, to just be shout, ah, these pastors, these pastors. I was with the former pastors. I was with them. And then um, a member sent me a message that um, our father's money, our father had died. So they were paying, I think, 76 million to, the, to, to herself. And so I just cheaply said it in the meeting. I said, ah, I said this person just sent me a message, Joe. Thank God, after the prayers, they are to pay the father's money that they've hold the father before he died. 76 million and all that. Right there in my house. Before God and man. One of these guys picked his phone and started negotiating his court with the lady. Right there. As they were leaving, I got missed calls and the lady sent me a message and said, Sir, did you tell them? I said, Tell who? I said, I was in a meeting. Your message came and I just mentioned it. And the lady showed me the chat. If what you carry is valuable, may God deliver you from people with loose lips. Now, you don't, you don't know how to pray yet. If what you carry is valuable, you have access to sensitive information, may God deliver you. From people with loose lips. And when I saw it, ah, I knew that, oh, if I didn't talk because I was at home, I was just trying to be free. And we are pastors. We are supposed to be pastors. Being a pastor means you are discreet. We're just supposed to talk and know stuff and then move forward. And you're already negotiating your court. And I told the lady, tell him that you've told me. And that's where it ended.
You read the devotional this morning. The person was a leader here. He came to me one day and said, God said, I'm no, I should no longer attend this church. I am done with this church. That God is done here with me. And two years later, we had a program. The crowd had increased over there in Benin. He came to give his life to Christ. Was God done with you or was it the devil that has... I don't understand. 2020, he was contacting everybody, himself and his wife. His wife too was in church. You see, those of you ladies... I speak to those of you in Benin and those of you here. Those of you ladies that attach yourself unwholesomely to a male or to a guy, that even when the guy is in error, you don't seem to have sense to know that a man that is not under authority is in problem. That's how the sister followed the brother and left the church to go and marry. It was after marriage. I mean the one in the devotional today, today's devotional, is after marriage she found out that even when they were dating and married, he was in a kosodi, sleeping with people in a kosodi. And she found out that me, who was trying to correct them, I was the one that loved them. So she sent me a personal message, August 2020, to apologize. And I told her, it is well. But remember, this is Nigeria. It is well is what we tell people that are already in the well there's nothing i can do because when rebellion grips you it looks like sense ah you will know you think you know what you are doing and time and chance the bible says happens to everybody be careful now they are married but now there are many things coming out be careful who you have a soul tie with some takes you up another will destroy you and let me tell you so ties that are good must be maintained. Some of us entered into so tie by promising to be there for somebody. Yes. Yes. You just see somebody's rising and say, I'll, I'll always be there for you. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of you. And that is good for a while. But as we keep growing, the person is not ready to grow. The person keeps pulling you down. You will have to let it go. Proverbs 6 talks about this, that with our words, we've entered into contracts and ensnared ourselves. So that you will recognize that in all these things I mentioned, emotions, intellect, and will, everything has to do with words. There is no will without words. There is no emotions that can be described with words. Intellect is all about words. So one of the ways, major way, to start cutting off soul ties is use your words. I disconnect in the name of Jesus from anybody I have an ungodly soul tie with. Any soul tie that has made demons assess me. You can be very close soul tie with a person that is under a family curse, under a demonic issue, and that issue will rub off on you. Look at Lot. Just because he was connected with Abraham, he was delivered. Right? Who are you connected to? So we, the deliverance we do in church is spirit. Who are you in this body? And the spirit will leave. People will shout and fall. They will say, hey, pastor is great. It's a lie. After that person is free from the spirit, the person can be a liar. Because lying is not a spirit alone. It can also be a character. Do you understand? So this is where you have to start knowing who am I and who are you. How does soul, soul ties start? Bonding. How does bonding start? Frequency. If you stay with a mad woman in the same room for some months, she will soon be attractive to you as a guy. In fact, as a lady, you will soon understand the person's madness. You, you, you will make excuses for it. And if we come to meet you after a few months, you will tell us if she's going close to the wall like that, she wants to bite somebody, don't go close to her. You're already understanding the madness. No, you're already understanding the madness. I'm teaching you, this is what most of you do. You bear toxic relationships because you chose to stay in it. And why do you choose to stay in it? History. I've known him since. 
my my mother's uncle auntie's cousin's son so we can't break up we are together i've known him for a while he's my friend she's my bestie you need to know loyalty expires loyalty expires and soul ties can become weak if you don't feed the soul tie it can become weak and it will fall like wax soul ties some of you can't do a day without a movie some of you cannot do a day without talking to somebody some of you cannot do a day without there are many things we have soul ties to and because of these soul ties we become unfit for destiny helpers we can't be helped because when a person wants to help you and God reveals these things to them for example somebody I wanted to help someone and then I knew that I was going to help the person I could have already planned to help the person and then um, we had uh, a meeting and after the meeting the person comes up to meet me and I told the person I'm, go I'm, I'm going to help you and there was a month I spoke about change of names right yes and then the person had met me and told me uh, my name is not bad I said your name is not bad oh I was told it was bad all right no problem keep your name but if a person's name is bad the person will change their name and move away from that family uh, limitation that bears a bad name and I've taught the message and then months later the person reports me to his mom or his family I don't understand the mom calls me the person didn't have the sense to tell me excuse me sir my mother is going to call you because of the change of name and she wants to make inquiries after the mother called me and spoke all the family issues the person didn't have sense to meet me and say sir my mother called you I'm sorry I didn't tell you before and she spoke about this thank you sir for understanding the person didn't the person even saw me in church on Sunday and didn't say anything and the person has access to me now you know why I use the block button easily access is golden some of you the character you display is like you are not raised well at home so now I have this access to help the person when that happened I go back to God and say what was what going on and God says I hope you have learned what I'm trying to tell you then I looked at the situation ah thank you father I told you it is a message called signs and wonders so I moved on from there you can have your opinions it's me that God sent for this work, and I know the way I see things. I know the way I see things. Many of you, oh, you want to go on a relationship with a lady? You won't tell me. <laughs> you will go on the relationship, mess up. You will do the wrong things, say the wrong things, and everything will end. At the end of the day, the lady doesn't like you anymore. Somebody outside the ministry, we now get the access you got. This, this happened last month. Last month. One of those that have left the ministry, the younger sister's fiancé, contacted me. And he was going to meet the parents. <laughs> and I said, what do you want from me? He said, sir, help me. Don't look at the fact that this person left the ministry and spoke against you and all that. Just help me. I said, okay, let's start. I started by 7 a.m. in the morning. I finished around 9, teaching him what a father, biological father should teach him, teaching him what a spiritual father should teach him. Then I entered into the prophetic. I told him how the meeting with the parents will be. By 9.45, he was crying. He said, sir, you mean you do this for your people and they could still live? I said, yes, I did it for them. When he went for the meeting, I still have the message here. He said, sir, thank you. It was exactly how you said it will be. I made no mistake submitting to you, sir. Thank you, sir. And he's not a member of the ministry. He's in Winner's Chapel. He's going to be a leader there. Valuable things are vulnerable. I just didn't know my price long ago. This is very important. But we have those in ministry. They would have already gone out to the lady and everything. Then they will now tell me later, I'm sorry, sir and everything sorry for yourself it's not my lady it's not my relationship whatever you keep from me is you that will have to be a responsibility for it and i will say it again if i am not aware of something ahead of time don't bring it to me when it's in crisis mode i won't help you 
You can't pressure God. Neither can you pressure a man of God. If you are not ready to learn this way, you will reap it in your own family. Because the essence of church is family, in case you don't know. The kingdom of God, what God is looking for is a family. If you learn how to work with God, you will know how to represent God to your children. Many failed parents are parents that did not work with God personally, so they did not know how to preserve their children from abuse. Somebody came to meet me. She was raped by, uh, by her uncle. She reported to her mom, Mom, bitter. Can you imagine that? At the time I was talking to her, she hated her mother with, with a kind of hatred even me I can't explain. It's not demon, no. Her soul has been shredded. Why? The system that God put over her life to preserve her, to fulfill destiny, called a mother, called a father, parents, they are not there. So the lady hates men and she hates her mom. What will I do? Call the mother. I don't have business with that. If the mother knew Jesus, she won't do that. If the father knew Jesus, he would stay with the mother, marry the mother, and raise that child well. But now the girl is 22. So what do we do? It's now church problem. Yes, now. Because she will come to church. When, when she sleeps with a guy, she doesn't know who else to tell. She will have to tell us. She will have to manage the situation. Meanwhile, her mom is still alive. Oh. Her dad is still alive. But there are dead men walking. The soul that's in it shall die. So there are people whose souls are dead. You correct them, they don't hear it. Do you know that everybody cannot play the keyboard? My brother taught me something. He said there's something called tone deaf. These people can come to church. They're usually pastor's wives at times. They will come and sing. They will be off key. Have you seen people like that? They don't know they are off key. Come and join me, sing hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh. They don't know. You know, but you can't laugh because it's mama, it's pastor's wife. And keyboard should be jumping from key to key because they are tone deaf. <laughs> oh, you are laughing. I didn't come here to laugh. <laughs> so also, people are truth deaf. They can't hear. They can't hear. You are going to pray <laughs> that the Lord should purge your soul. Ah, Society has stained our soul a lot. You watch movie, spoil, it spoils your mind. You talk with one friend online, they tell you something you are not supposed to hear. You come to church, even pastor can spoil your mind. God needs to help us. Please bow down your head. Ask God to repair your soul. Some of you are hurt. Somebody that left your life hurts you. Ask God to heal your soul. Some of you need to confront somebody and talk with them so that the relationship can work well. Instead of bearing it inside, bearing it inside. The more you bear matters inside, it will hurt you, even physically, it will hurt your internal organs. Because of what has gone into some people's soul, they take people for granted. They take people for granted. Nothing is sacred to them. Nothing is special to them. Let's begin to pray. Lord, heal my heart. Heal my soul. <laughs> hmm. And if you are the kind that is disrespectful, nothing means anything. You can talk to anybody anyhow. Ask God now nah, that you are sorry. Start repenting. You will need to apologize to those people that you have been rude to. Working with God creates a godly character in you. Begin to pray.
Pray, Lord, I use my mouth anyhow. If you are the kind that use your body anyhow, sex doesn't mean anything to you. It's time to start realigning your life. You are the temple of God. You are better than that. You are not a public property. Lord, preserve me. Preserve me. Too many people have entered my soul and taken a piece of my soul out. Pray. If you came from a terrible family, a divided home, pray now. Lord, I forgive my parents. Give me wisdom not to repeat their mistakes. Pray. Pray fervently. Pray fervently. Your life depends on it. My relationship must work better than my parents' own. Pray. This is the destiny. Ah. We are realigning. Now you are going to pray. Ask God to show you every soul tie. Every ungodly soul tie in your life. Whether it was since when you were 10 years old. Whether it was through sexual abuse. Whether it was through consensual sex. Whether it was your bestie. Whether it was a leader. Anyone. Lord. As long as this soul tie does not serve your purpose, Lord, cut it off. Deliver me from this soul tie. I release this person. I forgive them and I cut off. Soul tie with you and you are not prospering. You are not getting better. That soul tie must go. Be delivered. our responsibility to bless our children as parents it's our responsibility as children to pray for our parents because it's not easy for them let us stop blaming family as the reason for our failure let us stop blaming what our parents didn't give us take responsibility now i cut off from soul ties i cut off from soul ties expose every soul tie to me lord Show me unhealthy soul ties. I disconnect myself from unhealthy soul ties. I will not use a human being to replace you. Right to God. I will not use a human being to replace you. Ah. I will not trust any human being above you, Jesus. Ungodly soul ties. them to disconnect them pray this is the beginning of deliverance pray deliver me from myself that's a major prayer deliver me from myself I talk too much I am rude I don't care about people. I do things anyhow. Deliver me from myself today. I don't see when I'm doing something wrong. If they tell me I'm wrong, if they correct me, I'm angry. Deliver me, Lord, from myself. <laughs> Deliver me, oh. Ah.
anybody has hurt you, forgive them. That's how you start letting it go. Forgive anyone that has hurt you. I know it is painful. Forgive them. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go today. Showtime with someone that has died. Lord, I disconnect myself. Wait, hold on. There are people that see dead people in their visions, and there are people that perceive death around them. They may have a soul tie to someone that has died, that the death pain them so much, their soul refused to let the person go. We are going to pray that every connection from the grave, Father, by your fire, I cut it off today in Jesus' name. Begin to pray every connection from the grave that people are seeing dreams of death people are seeing dead relatives destroy that now by the fire of god your mouth is your weapon destroy it now destroy it now thank you jesus thank you jesus in your mercy destroy that appetite hold on no. there are people that love bad things let me explain judas loved to steal and that's how the devil came through stealing that bad thing you love to do is what the devil will use to destroy you some people love to abuse 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 until they will abuse somebody that is spiritually powerful in the negative direction and now we reply them and that's the end i'm serious some people love to be violent and they like it they don't feel peace until they have taken malice they've, they've taken offense with you the devil is going to use it one day we've read the bible just like I said the prince of this world comes and he finds nothing in me means he finds no avenue in me to enter so we are going to pray anything that is ungodly that gives me my soul pleasure father kill that pleasure let me stop being comfortable with ungodly things let me stop being comfortable with the wrong things let me stop let me stop let me stop being comfortable comfortable with keeping malice Comfortable with unforgiveness, comfortable with lying, comfortable with deception, comfortable with stealing. Father, I want to be free, but Lord, that desire, that pleasure, kill it. Kill 
it. My conscience cannot die like this. Kill it. Kill that pleasure, that pleasure for that evil thing. begin to pray for your parents or your guardians I want you to begin to bless them the protocol is this if we do this we will not carry evil traits we will not repeat patterns but God will use us to bless their lives begin to pray bless your parents even if you are offended with them repent now bless your parents bless your siblings begin to pray release words of blessings over them These words of blessings over your parents. Yes, yes, yes. We saw how David honored his parents. We saw how Solomon honored David. Great. This soul tie must be broken. Cannot be in offense with your parents and be able to break it. It's not possible. Thank you, Jesus. Let's begin to ask God for mercy, mercy, mercy. Areas we have offended people. Areas even me and me have offended people. Let's ask for mercy. That that offense will not backfire. God will forgive us and have mercy on us. Bear with our character, with our words, we've offended people. Please, let's pray. You may have offended your parents, your friends, your spouse, your sibling. They may not curse you, but they may have gone to tell somebody that will speak a word against you. Obtain mercy now. Mercy. Over your life, over your destiny. Mercy. Mercy. Ask God for mercy. It's by His mercies we are not consumed. Nobody is perfect yet, but we are attaining to perfection. If you are obtaining mercy, you will show mercy to others also. Ask God for mercy. You know the 
thing the nature inside you loves to chase after bad things ask God for mercy ask God for mercy ask God for mercy let, let God begin to preserve you from trouble your mouth will not put you in trouble your legs will not put you in trouble ask God for mercy ask God for mercy spirits will not use the advantage that you are giving them that loophole in your character they won't use it against you ask God for mercy if God leaves you like this you are in trouble mercy life upon your children upon your family mercy mercy upon your relationship mercy in everything mercy 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 Amen. Hold on. Listen. This thing we've thought, you're going to take your communion definitely. Learn how to act right. That's all I can just say. Because if this God is telling me now, I I don't know. I, I would love to teach this message next week, but it has to be today. this period I've not been around, the, the journeys God has taken me through, I've seen a lot of things. There are people that carry courses for free just because of the way they behaved to somebody that is spiritually dark. You will meet them in the bus stop. You will meet them at the place of work over the counter. You will meet them in the bus. You will meet them everywhere. Just the same way a man of God can see you and say, God bless you and your life will change. Maybe a big man of God so also a very dark person in the spirit can meet you and say ah this girl see what you did you are useless and it will continue like that be very careful life is spiritual life is spiritual i see some of you you behave anyhow you talking if something does not please you you will use your mouth and spoil it you will talk 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 you are the kind that will not marry early then when you are now 40 something you are now humble you are now left over the way of humility is the way of honor God will keep lifting you he will use marriage to lift you he will use money to lift you he will keep lifting you stop wearing your, your feelings on your flesh you don't have to react to everything be mature be mature the fact that we are young does not mean we should be senseless like the world we have ancient wisdom from God treat everybody with courtesy I have gotten more miracles from Okada men, from ordinary women that sweep on the streets because I helped them and they will look at me and say, God bless you. Wherever this money came from, it will never run dry. And look at me today. It's not Oyedipo, it's not one big man of God, though. even ordinary bike men. The blessings are not in the popular places, they are on the streets. 
learn this thing i've taught is not the end this is just the prologue i'm not even going to introduction to talk about conversations in the soul how to know your own voice in your soul who is teaching it on youtube some voices will just come you just hear you just hear take that money sleep with that girl it's not you a visitor has come to your soul but you don't know you can't check and say does this thing align with the word of god okay if this person told me this this thing is not from the word of god i don't want to hear it recently i was supposed to make a decision everybody was like sir this thing will make you big this thing will do this this thing will do this i looked at it it was nice if i entered into that dimension whoo, everybody will be thinking i've gone i did my research i did my prayers i didn't feel peace with it i came back and said i'm sorry i can't do it i don't feel peace with this decision yes and later we found out that it was the best thing to do that i did not feel peace with it i didn't sense peace so that means god was not there it was the wisest thing not to do it many of you you don't hear the voice of god you are controlled by peer pressure what somebody else told you you are always suspecting those that are trying to help you let me tell you something when we move to a new venue pastors members we will see the deliverance you see what god will do there's a spirit of suspicion that makes you suspect everybody that is sent to help you and there's a spirit of casualty that makes you take everything casual even precious things so one time you will sleep with somebody and you have a fiance or you have a husband you will say what why are you shouting it's just sex and see a spirit has entered you you need deliverance soon you just say i just stabbed you i just, I just hit your head small why, why are you now dying And there's a spirit of dishonor you can never have honor for people above you you will shall always do something in dishonor it follows you everywhere these are spirits they don't teach about it's the one of lust the one of uh, anger that you hear people talk about these are other spirits that can be replicated in the bloodline let me tell you spirits come to the soul first before they enter into the spirits you are going to pray in the book of psalms it says set a guard over my mouth right we are going to amplify it and say god set a guard over my mouth my ear and my eyes i will no longer tell you i see no evil i was only speaking for myself <laughs> you will have to do it yourself now set a guard over my eye my ear my eyes my ear and my mouth that my life will be preserved that's the prayer point set a guard the bible says whoever we see good days must refrain his lips from speaking what evil about another person evil about nigeria evil about yourself evil about your family many of you have made these mistakes and if god didn't send me to help you now i don't know what will become of you you'll be wasting my time here because it's better for you to go to another church for deliverance to another place so that a new person can come and sit here and be blessed many evil talks that you have discussed on your whatsapp you think it stops at whatsapp alone spirits have entered so you will get job remote job you will get um, um car but inside your soul there will be emptiness your soul is not prospering your body is prospering you are changing clothes but your soul is not prospering there's flesh tie there's soul tie there's spirit tie i am just talking about soul tie today next week sunday is thanksgiving mid-year service you come with your thanksgiving seed we dance take songs and whatever god tells me to teach i'll teach it if i can continue this throughout next month maybe combined service because we have delivered people whose souls are damaged and we are facing the consequence in church yes a lady a lady here cannot cannot report i asked her are you telling me the full truth yes sir from a leader i found out the full truth but she, i found another truth what she told me is 70 percent what she told the other leader is 35 percent and she was crying in front in front of me and this is not the full truth i told you before the most unsincere people are christians we can't it's not a spirit to cast out this is a nature in the soul in the soul 
prayer fastings will handle it and let me tell you fasting is not a denial of food fasting is a denial of what is food to your soul yes what is food to you some of you it is sex some of you it is money some of you it is a uh, uh, communication you must always chat with somebody it is not this agricultural food you take into your mouth you may not eat for 13 hours because you are gisting what ought gist with your friend if you are going to fast that's your real fasting god will tell you cut it off then your flesh will feel it not when you're not eating anything and you're still ping, 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 generation generation z you're chatting you are still eating you are eating into your soul real fasting i cannot tell you to go and fast god knows what fasting is to you me on a normal day i may not eat i may forget to eat if i'm researching something i'm working online so it is not food there's something that is in your appetite if you can't master your appetite your appetite will master you those of you that are here that always act the way you feel one day you will feel like dying you will commit suicide because people don't just commit suicide they've been having a pathway where they act out their feelings they felt like having sex they acted it they felt like destroying things they did it one day they will feel like cutting themselves no matter how they resist they will cut why they built it some of us now wake up praying but one day we didn't feel like pastor said we should pray we prayed on that day we felt like praying we prayed now it is over 20 years we can be sleeping like and just turn shaka and that's all that's all nothing is permanent you maintain things you maintain things nothing is permanent if the person connected to your soul is not growing is not prospering and you two are not prospering please both of you end that end it you're not good for each other now you're not good for each other you are broke they are broke you are not prayerful they are not prayerful you are all you are both discussing issues and about people joblessness what did i say you should pray about just now hmm? yes a god a god a god go and read the story of noah ham shem jeff the children set a god heavenly father over my senses my ears my eyes my mouth set a god set a god over my heart i don't be falling in love with anybody any guy that has a car any lady that has that is yellow set a god i want to be consistent in my life i want to be consistent if i start something i want to finish it if i love somebody i want to love the person to the end i don't want to be moving here and there it's, 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 it's immaturity lord set a guard over my eyes i don't want to see what will spoil my mind i don't want to hear what you do what will give me fear pray oh. pray pray That God healed that we prayed for in um, the deliverance session from SS to AA. Remember the lady that God healed from SS to AA? I was asking God why. 
how can people how can somebody lose their testimony he said the person can't i said but the lady has changed back to ss he said yes he said the mother has a part to play the mother was going everywhere telling everybody my daughter is now aa my daughter is now aa but the mother was speaking against the church that ministered to the daughter and changed the dna from ss to aa that was one error let me tell you what god said god said it was not powerful enough to change it so i went back into the charts and i found out the lady got healed she may be listening now she got healed she came to the hospital in lagos it has changed to aa from ss the next thing she's seeing vision of kissing somebody she's seeing vision she's loving somebody having feeling that is how the door opened for the devil's attack to enter they can spread stories about you if you are on fire their arrows will stop at the door nobody can open your life only you so the mother can tell enemies the mother can gossip ah my daughter is not lost the person that even caused the attack they will fire arrow again if the girl was praying Jakarta, and she was putting her mind on things of god with all her soul that attack no go enter now many times they've attacked most of us it can't enter she was guarded and once there's a loophole in your life the devil is a master shot he can fire an arrow through that loophole and what god did for you you will lose it he's a thief deliverance can be general it means that to everybody but let me tell you freedom is personal you must decide to walk out of what has been holding you is your decision it's not collabo it's not by family my family did family deliverance. Show. They called a the prophet here in Lagos. Sat all of us down. Spoke to everybody. But some people did not take it. We that took it, only three of us, we moved very forward. Then the others now came and said, How are you moving forward? I said, Because you missed the first instruction to honor your parents. My elder ones, if you honor daddy, if you honor our parents, things will work for you. That's the key and now they are starting it because the devil will always give you a reason to be arrogant he will give you excuses don't pick it keep working on your salvation keep working on your salvation till you are free that's what it is my job is to give you the materials then if you are really ready to be free you will pray your way through you will humble yourself you will do what you need to do in the humility you may go and meet somebody and say i'm sorry i spoke to you wrongly forgive me but say, oh, no, no 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 there's no problem it's not about the person it's about you you are establishing the kingdom of god in your heart that when somebody does something you want to speak god will hold your mouth like this ah, you can't speak no now i taught you people about the soul this month i told you right so prosperity this month and most of my battles this month that like i couldn't even come to church on, on a sunday was from the soul and when i passed my test oh come and see me rejoicing i was excited i have passed my test i have passed my test else i won't be able to preach here today because my soul felt like just go out there and deal with them Mm-mm. i will go to the door ah, i will close it back it's not easy they are wrong i know they cheated you i know this thing is costing you almost a million i know hold on do it the right way it's maturity it's maturity it's maturity some things you can't pray to some things you have to process into it we are going to pray where i have failed my test lord bring back the test again ah very deep prayer wherever i have failed my test in life lord bring back that test again test to be a better parent a prayerful parent test to be a better spouse test to be a good child pray test to be a good partner to the guy i'm in love with to the lady i'm in love with bring back that test again oh lord bring it back i must write that test i must pass it my generation will not be like this i must pass that test I must pass that test of prayer. Lord, wake me up at night again to pray. I will pray this time. I will pray this time. The last time you woke me up at night, I did not pray. Lord, I will pray this time. Wake me up again. As you used to wake me before, wake me up again. I will pass my test. Oh. I will pass my test. Oh. 
I will pass. I will pass this test. I will pass it. Help me. I will pass this test. I will pass this test. Hallelujah. God is speaking to me now. Some people had visions or dreams. Hmm. Some people saw a dream or a vision that they used to see before when they were in bondage. I'm talking about this month. I've not been here for maybe two weeks or so. Uh, so I'm talking about this month. A vision or a dream you used to have before came back again. And the Lord is saying the enemy loves to bring back old captivity when Asian doors are not guarded because not all Asian doors are good so if you have been free from something before and you are not maintaining the ordinance that keeps you free from that thing the devil tries to bring you back So I'm not calling you out, and I don't want to minister to people. No, I'm not calling you out. It's general, and for those watching, please lay your hands on your head, one hand on your head. Lay your hands on your head. Say, Heavenly Father, I cancel any attack from my past. I cancel every access from my past given to demons given to old spirits I decree I decree I stay free my vision stay clean my dreams stay pure I reject every attack from my past in the mighty name of Jesus I reject every repetition from my old past in the mighty name of Jesus the glory of God covers me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet I am exempted from repeating old patterns I am exempted from repeating old patterns I'm exempted from bondages of the past in Jesus name Amen 
with your hands down. Whenever this thing tries to come up, please cancel it. This week is a very sensitive week in the realms of the spirit. Some of you will have strange visions this week. When you have those good visions, write it out, celebrate it, give God praise. If the devil tries to bring a bad vision, cancel it immediately. Why? Let me tell you one of the reasons that the Lord spoke to me about. He said, when people are preparing to thank God, the devil brings a tank of troubles. So I'm not just telling you bring a thanksgiving seed. No, you will know why you should bring it before next week. When people are preparing to thank God that we saw the half of the year, thank God for bringing us through. Some of you have gotten two jobs already. Some of you are already earning almost half a million. Some of you have been raised in this house and are growing. Do you think the devil is happy? Some of you are relocating. Some of you are traveling abroad. Some of you are even about to buy cars. Do you think the devil is happy? He's not. But Thanksgiving is what many of you missed. You didn't thank God enough. Because Thanksgiving is a debt that everybody must pay. Yes. If God, if somebody gives you an handkerchief, like the brother gave me this, I would say thank you. If he came here and gave me a khaki, I may pause the message and we may discuss further, right? The value of what God gave you must be directly proportional to the thanksgiving you give him. Look at your life this year. If God has not done for you, then please come next week. Don't wear your traditional clothes. Come next week anyhow and just come and clap. But if you know what God did for you, come with your native. Even me, I'm going to also wear native. Come with your native and come and dance. Come and celebrate God. It's a prophecy for the next six months. There are people finer than you, better than you, married before you. And their life this first six months was wahala. They lost relationships. They lost jobs. They lost money. Their car broke down. So next week, we are coming to thank God that in this same Nigeria people are running away from, we are getting blessed. Yes. We are getting blessed. In this same Nigeria, people are running away from. We are getting blessed. We are advancing. We are not saying we won't leave. We won't leave as trying to escape. We will leave as an advancement. But we are getting blessed. Look at the accounts. Look at all the things God is doing. We are getting blessed. That's why we are thanking God next week. And we look at our lives too. We used to be somehow in January. Our habits, our this, it has changed now by June. Oh God, we thank you. That's it. Oh. God has done so much for us. And for many of us, He has taken away our sorrow. He has taken away our shame. What else remains than to thank God? Are you getting what I'm saying? So please understand this. I want you to understand this. It's from your soul you will thank God. Remember, love the Lord your God. That's what we are attaining to. With all your soul with all your mind, all your strength. So not coming to church next week and just be there, we are singing, until I just be moving. With your strength, you dance. With your full mind. That's why some of you cannot even give. You can't give for Suya. Uh, we are giving commitment in church for this. You can't give. And you don't know you are a debtor. Why? You are supposed to feed what feeds you. Yes. A farmer plants and keeps watering, keeps watering, and the thing will feed him later, right? So if, if the church, if the ministry has blessed you, and we say, okay, the month of August, we're having suya, we're having this, you should, you should be the first to give for it. Your complaining shows that you don't know what God has done for you. So we're having Thanksgiving service. Everybody has a testimony. Everybody. The smallest person here that you woke up this morning is not the only testimony. You are transferred to come to church. You are healthy. You are not listening to me on YouTube from an hospital bed. So next week, we are going to thank God. Thank God. Alright? For the past, and we are going to thank Him. People are going to die. Oh! 
October, November. Let me tell you the prophecy. You know, I told you before about Naira crossing 600. I told you, media did not find the tape. It will get to 800. But I also mentioned October, November. Nigeria is going to shake. Something is going to happen. All these political people that are there, God is not with them. The president in 2023, if there will be a president, is somebody we did not expect. I'm serious. And those that are traveling should travel on time. Because for traveling by next year, they will try and make it harder for you to leave the country and not return. For those of us that leave and return, it will be very easy. Just go and come back. But with those that want to, uh, how do I put it, jackpot, they will try and make it harder. Because in most of those countries, Nigerians are misbehaving. So it will get harder next year for that permanent going to the popular countries. So you may need to find an alternative. But embalmment, politicians are going to die. A lot of people are going to be used for rituals. And all the politicians that will try and use people, they will all fail. It's not a matter of amen. I have watched it. They will fail. God is interested in Nigeria now. And he's going to play a very solid game that will favor us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't speak evil about the country. Bless the country. Pray for your parents. Pray for your family. The next wave of attacks, the kind of attacks that will be coming from after these six months, I will inform you next week so that you can prepare yourself for it. The attacks that happened in this first half of the year, I told you since November last year, right? Personal attacks, right? Okay. The kind of attacks that are going to happen in the next half of the year will not really just be personal. And that's why we have to be very prayerful. So if next week after the singing, we spend four hours praying, I won't mind. So that you'll be able to see it. As we draw near to rapture, to see what the devil is doing will become very difficult. If your eyes have not been opened in the spirit normally, to see what the devil is doing, very, very difficult. Because the devil will do it in a religious way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And those of you that work at night, stop. From the month of July, stop night waka. What did I say? From what month? Many atrocities are going to happen in the night across the nation. When you hear it, 5 p.m. downwards. Once it's dark, if you can stay where you are, stay. It's going to get crazy. Yes, but October, middle, middle of October, November. What will happen in this nation? You watch it like this. You what will watch like this? Are you serious? And we will enjoy. But God needs to shake things and shape things. Please, those of you that work at night, you go outside at night. Even if you are going from here, you live here, you are going to Ojota bus stop to buy cream. Don't do it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? As we approach 2023, night walk. See, let me, let me, let me be more specific. There will be a news that will come up in the environment where a vehicle drove. And this vehicle I'm seeing is space bus. We drive, stop, open, snatch somebody and move. They are desperate. When the news comes up, I won't be the one I will say it. Most of you will read in your phones. And so we must be prayerful as a church. Are you getting what I'm saying? You must be prayerful for your siblings, for your parents. Don't let offense ever enter your heart that you can't pray for somebody. Mm, don't let it ever happen to you. You are better than that. Alright? Okay, so now lift up your hands. I want you to bless the month of July. I want you to release more uh, words into that month. It's the seventh month. Seven is for perfection. Please bless it. Bless it for your family. Bless it for your home. For your finances. Bless it. Bless it. You will receive a lot in that month. There will be testimonies. Your business will stand in that month. Your health will work well. You will have sound health. 
begin to pray.